I mean, unless you're doing something like fitting on the flag, you know, just being blatantly disrespectful to service members. People just have to remember that the military is the defense of the country. I understand that it is a free speech issue. It doesn't bother me. They're a private citizen, so for them to not stand, it personally doesn't affect me. Well, some people said it was disrespectful. Some people were like, hey, he has a right to do what he feels is necessary. Hello everyone, Freddie Lee Jones III here, Greater Ones Productions. This is my documentary, Shut Up in Color. What is Shut Up in Color, you ask? A direct command, verbal jab, in the following order. Step the fuck off. Shut the hell up. Mind your own goddamn business without having to use profanity itself. This documentary is important. It's because I personally feel like black voices in the military aren't heard. First, we're gonna start off by asking our panel to state their name, branch of service, and how long that they serve. My name is Daryl Stewart. I served in the United States Air Force for 21 years and eight months. My name is Darnisha Robinson, and I served in the U.S. Air Force for four and a half years between 1998 and 2002. I'm Didi Leggett. Um, I was in the United States Air Force. I served for 20 years, and I retired two years ago, October 1st, 2018. My name is Devin Boatwright. I served in the Air Force for six years. I'm currently in the Air National Guard, so I'm a vet and I'm currently in service. My name is Dominique Constant, but call me Dom. Spent four years in the Army from Alexandria, Louisiana. Freddie Lee Jones, Jr., two years in the United States Marine Corps, 72 to 74, eight years in the Louisiana National Guard. Captain Barracks, uh, Battery C, Washington Artillery. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Thank you all for those lovely introductions. As both black men and women that have served in the armed forces, what's your personal stance on players protesting during the national anthem? This is, this is such a such a deep question. People just have to remember that the military is uh, the defense of the country. And I might have just been my first year out when Kaepernick decided to kneel. Mm -hmm. And I had a bunch of friends that were like, you know, whether they were black or white, it was kind of mixed on both sides where they're like, this is disrespectful. Some people said it was disrespectful. Some people were like, hey, he has a right to do what he feels is necessary. Personally, I think there's other ways that you could, you know, show that you're, you're protesting something. Mm -hmm. But Kaepernick specifically, him doing it, sparked such a just a big debate that I saw no problem with it because what he did needed to be done. It doesn't bother me. I understand why they do it. They're private citizens entitled to their own opinion, freedom of speech. So for them to not stand, it personally doesn't affect me. I understand that it is a free speech issue, mm -hmm. but I also understand that it's it, it kind of lands in the realm of your on the clock with your employee and there are certain standards that you have to uphold and some and in a way i felt like that that wasn't the, the right time to do it because it did provide a distraction and i felt like it was just very polarizing um because it forces people it forces your teammates and it forces the audience to pick a side when this is something uh this is an event um an activity that is normally very very unifying regardless of you know what on what side of the aisle you sit um, my stance as a black female veteran on the nfl nba players kneeling um as a protest in the uh, league right now is i feel like that's their constitutional right um, as a retired veteran i feel like that's what i serve for i serve for people to protest how they want to protest peacefully. They have that right to kneel basically because uh, if more uh, people of African descent in America would hear the, what they consider the hidden verses of the national anthem mm -hmm. and, 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 and knew what it meant that no uh, black person in America would ever uh, sing the national anthem. And as military members, do you feel disrespected? And if so, or if not, why? I mean, unless you're doing something like spiteful as far as like, 
you know, spitting on the flag or, mm -hmm. you know, just being blatantly disrespectful to service members. I, I actually think that people who, number one, who have never served in the military, who have an opinion on whether the military members feel disrespected, that's disrespectful. <laughs> because how do you know how we feel about somebody kneeling or anything like that or protesting in any kind of way? Um, because I hear a lot of people saying, oh, they shouldn't kneel because of disrespecting service members. Have you spoken to a service member? Because if I'm not mistaken, the, um, the purpose of the kneeling started with a service member telling Colin Kaepernick to kneel out of respect because he was going to sit instead of kneeling. He told him to kneel instead. No, I, I don't believe so because uh, it, it kind of goes with what I just said earlier is like, they're they're within their right they should they should be allowed to feel how they want to feel that that's what if you're if you're saying that you're down for freedom freedom means freedom for everybody meaning freedom for things i agree with and freedom for things i don't agree with as long as they're not doing anything illegal as a military vet no i don't think that i feel disrespected by them kneeling on the national anthem and we went to uh uh, Vietnam and fought a war up until this day. I can't tell you what it was for, why was it. So I don't think that when I was there, I was fighting for their rights to kneel for the national anthem mm -hmm. or not kneel. I felt that people before me that fought in different wars and thought that things would change when they got home. Uh, and they, they, they didn't. Uh, there were several incidents when I came home from overseas or wore my uniform. Uh, I was called a baby killer. And I uh, was told not that was in a war that you know, I was fighting the white man's war, uh, you know. So uh, there were several incidents where uh, we was told once we got to the airport to take off our uniform to keep from being harassed mm -hmm. or spit on or blow, blood thrown on our uniform. So. Uh, at that period of, of, of time, you know, I don't think that uh, I was fighting for uh, the rights of uh, the national anthem not to be, for, for them not to kneel. It's, it's frustrating, mm -hmm. uh, but as far as a personal attack, I, I really don't care enough. <laughs> I really don't um, care enough to take it that personally. I just start asking, you know, the questions and what's the motivation, what's behind it, who, you know, why now, those types of things. Um, at the end of the day, yes, um, we, we fought for or served for your right to exercise your First Amendment rights and, and things like that. So it's like, fine, if your employer lets you get away with it, then fine. But if you get penalized for it, that's also your business. But as far as taking it, you know, personally feeling like it's an attack against me, no, I don't, it doesn't affect me like that. Well, let's say if you're against the protest, what in your opinion would be the best way for them to protest and why? Protesting has been going on for decades, if not centuries. As long as people can be civilized and peaceful and don't destroy other people's property, then I have no quarrel with it. We for the most part, protested in the form of, you know, taking the knee, marching, shouting slogans and things like that. And But another form of protest is withholding, you know, withdrawing or focusing on your own group to protect your own self-interest. That's another form of protest. And I do think that uh, one side does one more than the other. Um, marching is an outward thing. Yes, you're outraged. Yes, you're, you want to take to the streets. But at the end of the day, you know, it's almost like shouting at the walls and hoping that they fall down. Probably if people are that feeling that in their feelings about during the national anthem, uh, I forgot what team that did it, but there was one team that just stood in silence for a minute 
after the national anthem and they still got booed. If you want to say prior to the game and then they have a moment of silence and then the whole thing starts, or if you want to say after the game, I don't think there's a perfect answer for that. I, I know we look at the riots and the looting. A lot of people would say, hey, they're protesting. No, that's what they're doing. They're rioting and looting. My definition of what I think a protest would be, I think the best way is consistent action. And what we're seeing today with every time I cut on the game, there's I can't breathe, there's Breonna Taylor, there's justice, there's Black Lives Matter. That is a more successful way because now it's just in your face. It's what you do afterwards if you have a plan. Now, I think if they would each individual uh, football or basketball player or baseball or uh, anyone of African descent in any sports, if they were collectively, not, not a couple of individuals, if they would collectively come up with a plan and if they can donate something like $3,000 a month collectively, and have a, a plan in place where that money would be used to build their, their own community, uh, build their own schools, hospitals. I think that that would have more of an impact than anything else that they're doing at this point. <laughs>